to talk about today is mole ratio. And the reason I said that this comes back to the last two units, four and five, naming, um, naming compounds and figuring out formulas for compounds and then balancing equations is because you have to be able to balance equations in order to do stoichiometry. If you get the balanced equation right and can read your periodic table, it will be easy to do. Mole ratio is an extremely useful mathematical quantity that relates the number of moles of one substance in an equation to the number of moles in another substance in an equation. And what I equate it to is called the swinging door. If you want to go from this room to Mr. Lasource's room, you have to go through a door, correct? No. You've gone from my room a student in here to a student in Lasorce's room. You've changed rooms, and so the mole ratio is that swinging door that gets you from one end of the equation to the other end of the equation, and it all comes from the balanced equation, chemical equation. And that's why I said that it's important. And let's look at a simple one. If we take Oh, come on. If we take hydrogen gas and oxygen gas and put it together, we get what you need for life, which is water. Is this balanced? No. We have two oxygens over on the left side, so we need to have two over here, so I balance it which now throws off my hydrogens, and now I balanced it. And what the mole ratio is, is using these whole number coefficients in front of the um, in front of the compounds. And what this means is this. The ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is what? It's the coefficient out in front of oxygen. Jinky's up again. All right, so I'm going to have to switch to. Not sure why it's doing what it's doing. Oxygen to water. What's the coefficient in front of oxygen? One. What's the coefficient out in front of water? Two. Now, what's the mole ratio of hydrogen to water? Two to two. That is why you need to do balanced chemical equations. That's the mole ratio. The numbers in front of each chemical tell you what the ratio is going to be. So, let's do this. I'm going to start out with another equation. We did this before. We took sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. I mixed it. I got sodium chloride and water. All right. First question in every problem you're going to do in this unit is to ask, is the equation balanced? And you should be able to go back and forth. How many sodiums on the left? On the right. Oxygens on the right or left. Right? Hydrogens on the left. Two, right, chlorines, chlorines. So this is balanced. So now what I want you to tell me is the mole ratio of <coughs> sodium hydroxide to sodium chloride. What is it? One to one. <coughs> so all the ratios are going to be what on this equation? One to one.
Now, the equation I gave you was what? H2SO4 plus, what was it, sodium hydroxide goes to make sodium sulfate and water. What's the balancing look like? One, two, one, two. That was the test, the quiz question. So, what is the ratio between sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and water? One to two. Now, what this means, there's another meaning behind this um, ratio. It means I need one part um, sulfuric acid and I need two parts sodium hydroxide. From that I will make one part sodium sulfate and two parts water. All right, It's like a recipe and this comes in handy when you're doing chemical reactions in the in the lab you want to make sure you have the right size container for your products you don't want to create such a cloud of hydrogen gas that if somebody makes an inadvertent spark that the room blows up and on an industrial level you got to know how much product you're going to make um, in order to fill an order or keep your production at a high rate so this is the very first step. The mole ratio is the first step. So what's the very first thing you got to do in these problems? Balance the equation. All right. So let's move on to the next page. And let's go up here. Somebody balance this for me. You're saying two, one, two. What's the ratio of sodium to sodium chloride? Two to two. Chlorine gas to sodium chloride? One to two. And sodium, this is chlorine. Two to one. So this is not really much different. And where did the rest of that question go? All right. I'll add to. The, I'll make it up as I go along here. I don't know why it cut off. Let's go here, and here, and here. How many moles of sodium chloride would be produced if we started with four moles of sodium? Why do you say four? Basically, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, right? Because you could simplify that. So it would be four moles of sodium chloride. How many moles of chlorine gas would you need? How many moles of chlorine gas would you need? Two, because the ratio between sodium and chlorine is 2 to 1 or 1 to 2, so you need 2 moles of chlorine gas. You're going to have a lot of practice to do on this, so I'm just trying to get through the notes. All right, 
There are four types of, I think what happened is when I converted this to PowerPoint, it lost part of it. There's four types of stoichiometry problems. And you've done some of them already. Mole to mole. That is going from one side of the equation to the other just using the mole ratios. And I said, this is the swinging door. The mole ratio gets you from one side to the other. Mole to mass. We're starting with a certain number of moles. and You're going to convert it to mass. Then we're going to do mass to moles. And then mass to mass, which is this problem here is what we do in chemistry lab. Because we do not have a scale to measure what? What don't we have a scale to measure? Moles or mass? We don't have a scale to measure moles, but we do have a scale to measure mass. And so what we're going to do is work our way through the first three types of problems, and in the end, you put the first three together, and you get what you can do in the lab. And we're going to have three labs in this class, this, this unit. Um, so what we're doing now is getting into the nice part of chemistry. We're getting out of the theory and into the... Let's get in the lab and do some stuff, fun stuff. Alrighty. <clears throat> well, it feels like they finally got the heat working in here. Maybe a little too well. Okay, um, I have two more slides today, but I'm going to push those off to tomorrow because they're more of a demonstration that I'm going to have you do some calculations for, and we're going to start doing those. But I do have an assignment for you tonight that you can start here in the next couple of minutes. I still, still see people writing, so I'll leave this slide up. Um, the assignment is there for the purpose of kind of drilling this into your head. It's a step-by-step -step procedure. It works you through. We'll go over it tomorrow. We'll also have a quiz over these notes. And the notes quizzes are like three to five questions. They're not going to be there to crush your spirit and leave you curled up in the corner whimpering. Um, if you study your notes. I'm going to hit pause on the tape.